Good evening, and welcome to our next session of Survey of the Bible. Now, you remember last week we discussed the people in the Old Testament, and before that we discussed the key movement of the nation of Israel, and before that, the first session we covered the geographical aspect of the Old Testament. Now tonight, we're taking it all together. So tonight is the last session of the Old Testament, but don't miss the next session because we're moving on to the New Testament. We're moving on to Jesus, so that's going to be exciting. So stick around and enjoy the session. This is one of my favorite sessions. This is when we bring so many pieces of the puzzle of the Bible all together as a unit because our goal by the time these eight sessions are over is that you'll be able to, without anybody helping you, to think from Genesis chapter 1 all the way through the Old Testament and the New Testament, either by um, the books of the Bible and how they're organized or by the people who live or this session, the periods of the Bible. And what we've done is we've taken the entire Bible and we've broken it down into 10 periods of the Old Testament and 10 periods in the New Testament. But we're going to have so much fun in this session. I want you to look at this set. Isn't this just beautiful? And the map that we've made just for you. And we have the Old Testament books on either side. And in front of me are the 10 periods. And I'm going to teach you these 10 words. And then we're going to review them each time until... You got it. So you could think backwards and forwards. And you could say, I know about the divided kingdom, and I know what takes place before. It's the United Kingdom. And I know after that, it takes place the exile. And I know the Bible. I feel at home. And I could let the Bible fall open. And wherever it turns, if it's a person or a place or a period, I'll, I'll know what's before and after. Just imagine this. And the same thing with the New Testament. So come on over here and let's take a look at these 10 different periods. We have names for them. Period one is the primeval period with creation, the fall, the flood, the patriarchal, which is when the famous people lived, you know, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph. Then they go down to Egypt because of the famine, remember? They're there 400 years with slavery primeval patriarchal Egypt. And after Egypt of 400 years, God raises up Moses. He leads them through the Red Sea. They go down to Mount Sinai. They wander in the wilderness. They come to the top of Moab and Moses dies. And then we have the conquest period in which Joshua takes over. He goes across the Jordan River. He conquers Jericho, conquers all of Canaan, divide the land into 12 tribes. This is, you know these stories. And then he dies. Well, then who's going to lead? Well, they don't have a king yet. There's a period between Joshua and the kings. And that's called the period of the judges. And it lasts a long time, like 400 years. And in that period of time, people like Deborah and Gideon and Samson ruled different parts of Israel. Yeah, but the people disobeyed God a lot in this period. It was a dark period. And the last judge was asked by the people of Israel, we want our own king. And so that begins the period of the kings. And there were three big kings in the history of the Old Testament. You know their names. It's Saul, David, and Solomon. And they all ruled all 12 tribes. And that's what we call that the United Kingdom period. And then when the last of the United Kingdom kings, Solomon, died, things kind of fell apart. Often happens that way. And his son, who took over as the king, was named Rehoboam. And Rehoboam uh, really messed up. And he was so harsh that some of the tribes, the ten tribes in the north, said, I'm not, we're not going to follow you as king. And we're going to have our own king and our own capital. And that northern part was called Israel. And the southern part was called Judah with their own king. And that's why it's called the kingdom that's divided, the divided kingdom. First the united kingdom, then the divided kingdom. This is where most of the prophets preached. And you remember, Assyria conquers Israel and scatters them around. And the Babylonians come around and they conquer Judah. And then they bring those Jews that they conquered back to Babylon. And uh, you're going to see that in a minute when I deal with a map behind me. But this period called the exile. And the exile means to live outside of your country. And the Jews lived outside their country for about 70 years. 
And at the end of the exile, Babylon was conquered by the Persians. And Persians had a whole different war policy. And they said to the Jews, hey, go home. Go home. Go build your temple back. Go build your walls back. Go become a people again. That's called the return. You have an exile, you live out of your country, then you come back and you live back in your country. That's called the return. When Israel returns and the walls are rebuilt and the temple's rebuilt and the people have a revival. And that's the story of the Old Testament from beginning to end. And I hope you realize, and that's not hard to understand. I, I seem to think, for me anyway, I put these together. This is the beginning of uh, the four big events. Creation, fall, flood, nations. Then God calls Abraham. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, primeval, patriarchal, primeval, patriarchal. And uh, the last patriarch goes down to Egypt, and a famine happens. And after Egypt, they go out into the wilderness. They leave through the Red Sea. These two go together. These are two places, Egypt and the wilderness. And they wander for 40 years. Moses dies, and somebody takes over. And the person who takes over is, what's his name? Yeah, Joshua. And he conquers the land. You know that. He divided up into 12 tribes, and then uh, the judges take over for a period of time, 400 years. So review it in your mind. The primeval patriarchal, two places, down into Egypt, then the wilderness. Then they conquer the land, and they have judges. And then the kings start. And by the end of the session, you're going to have all these 10 periods, the United Kingdom and the Divided Kingdom. Three big kings and a whole bunch of kings that most of them were wicked. And you remember Assyria conquers Israel. The Babylonians came over and conquered Judah. And they brought the Jews back. That's where Ezekiel and Daniel lived, was in the exile for 70 years in Babylon. And then comes their return. And they go back home. That's it. United Kingdom, divided kingdom, then the exile, and then they go home. Well, what happens before the United Kingdom? Well... That's where the conquest was in Judges. What happens before that? They're messed up big time in Egypt, and they wander in the wilderness and go all the way back to the beginning, to the primeval days, followed by the, by the big patriarchs. You starting to get it? We're going to deal right now with the places of the Old Testament and how do they fit into these 10 periods. Because we want you to be able to think from the patriarchal and the primeval period to Egypt and the wilderness to the conquest and the judges to the United Kingdom and the divided kingdom and to the exile and the return. Where do these all take place? Are, are you ready? Let's do it by periods. The primeval period takes place up here with the Tigris and Euphrates River flowing down into the Persian Gulf. So we're talking about the places. And the Garden of Eden was somewhere up in here, and then the fall of man, and then comes the flood. And remember, uh, Noah's Ark ended up in these mountains. And then after that comes the Tower of Babel, which is down in this area over here, in which God confused their languages and the nations of the world spread out. And that kind of finishes up the primeval. So when you think of the primeval, just think about the Garden of Eden and the Tower of Babel. And then the next period just comes all the way down to where Abraham was born, which is the beginning of the patriarchal period in the city of Ur. And God calls him out and says, I'm going to give you a promised land. He leaves Ur, travels all the way up here, comes around there and begins to see the promised land. He sees the Sea of Galilee, the Jordan River, the Dead Sea, the Mediterranean. You got that? And what happens is he starts to negotiate with God because of the wickedness of Sodom and Gomorrah and is unable to save it. And in the patriarchal, that's where Ishmael and Isaac and Esau and Jacob and Joseph eventually was sold down into Egypt where he sees the Nile River. They're down here in the next period called Egypt. And in this period of Egypt, it lasts about 400 years. And Israel is put under bondage. And eventually God raises up a deliverer named Moses who leads them through the Red Sea as the wilderness period begins. And they go down here to Mount Sinai, where they get the Ten Commandments. They hear about the tabernacle, but then they build the golden calf. It's really sad. And they get the law again the second time. They travel up here north in the wilderness. They wander around to a place called Kadesh Barnea. That's where they sent out those 12 spies. The spies come back and say, it's the land just like God promised, but... There's giants in the land. We, we can't defeat them. And you remember the two good spies, Joshua and Caleb, who said, wait, with God, what's the problem with the giants in the land? But they, they rebelled against God. 
And because of that, they wandered all through here for 40 years until that generation died. And then they come to the top of Moab, where Moses dies, and that finishes the wilderness period. So, he, so here's the primeval period here to here. Patriarchal period starts here, goes all the way down into here. Then the Egypt period, then the wilderness period. Then the next period is called the conquest. Remember that? Conquest. Joshua crosses the Jordan River, conquers Jericho, Ai. He divides all this land into the 12 tribes, and then he dies. The next period is the judges. Still right here, a number of people like Samson and Gideon and Deborah rule this land, but it's not a good period of time. And the last judge is named Samuel. And God leads Samuel, and he crowns the first king, who rules from Jerusalem right here. And that's called the United Kingdom, because all these 12 tribes are ruled by one king right here, the United Kingdom period. And there's three kings like that, right? Saul, you know this. David, Solomon. They rule each for 40 years, and when the 120 years of the United Kingdom is over, Solomon dies. And when his young son comes on the scene named Rehoboam, he doesn't have the wisdom of his dad, and there's a big to-do, and he makes a very foolish decision. And all the tribes in the north said, we don't want a king like you, Rehoboam, and we're leaving. And they left. And the nation split in half. And this is called Israel from that point forward. And the southern part is called Judah. And there are ten tribes here and two tribes here. And this group had their own capital known as Samaria. And Judah has their own capital known as Jerusalem. Well, in time, these kings that ruled in the north were all wicked. <laughs> Nineteen of them in a row. And what eventually happened is God brought a nation from way over here called Assyria. And the Assyrians came down and they conquered Israel. And then they did something that's quite remarkable. They killed some of them, but they scattered the rest of these people from the northern kingdom of Israel all over here. They scattered them. Then they brought people from this area back over here, and they made them intermarry. And that's where you and I get the word, the Samaritans. The Samaritans were the Jews that were left here who intermarried the people from here. That's why the people of Judah don't like the Samaritans. That's what happened. And that's called the Assyrian captivity. Well, it continued on. And eventually, Judah saw what God did to Israel, and they repented a number of times. Some great prophets preached here. But Judah kept going down and down and down and down until God said, come on, you need to repent. And they wouldn't repent. So a brand new period began. So it was the United Kingdom, then the divided kingdom, and this part was conquered by Assyria, and then the Babylonians down here. They come around, and they come this way three times, and they attack Judah and especially Jerusalem three times. And they, they didn't just kill some of them, they took a whole bunch of them and they brought them back around. And they made them live over here in Babylonia. That's called the exile. And it lasted 70 years, just like a prophet said, named Jeremiah. The Babylonians are coming and you're going to be living in exile for 70 years, just like he prophesied, and it came true. At the end of the 70 years, a nation over in this side named Persia came on the scene and conquered Babylon. And the king of Persia named Cyrus had a different policy. And he said, you know what? Why don't you guys go back home? Why don't you go back to your old promised land? Why don't you rebuild your temple? Why don't you rebuild yourself as a nation? Why don't you rebuild the walls? And so that's exactly what took place. So that exile over here lasted 70 years, and at the end of the 70 years, the Persians said to the Jews, go home. And there were three people that led this return. The first one was Zerubbabel. He came all the way around here, and he rebuilt the temple. And then Esther lived back here. She didn't go around. And the second person was Ezra. He brings about 1,700 people around, and he's a priest, and he, he leads the people to a revival to rekindle their hope. And then the third return is, very, is, is probably the best known. It's under Nehemiah. He comes around, and he rebuilds the walls. And that's the entire story of the Old Testament. Primeval period up here. 
patriarchal period starts in Ur, comes around. They have the kids. They go down to Egypt, Egypt period, 400 years. They leave there through the Red Sea, down to Mount Sinai, up to Kadesh Barnea. They wander around in the wilderness. They come to Moab. That's that. Then they cross and they conquer everybody. That's conquest. Then the judges. Then the United Kingdom. And then it falls apart. <laughs> and it splits Israel and Judah. And Israel is destroyed by the Assyrians who came down and scattered them and bring the people in. That's the Samaritans. And the southern part is destroyed by the Babylonians who come around three times and bring the Jews back. That's called the exile. And then Persia destroys the Babylonians, and Persia says, go home, and Zerubbabel, Ezra, and Nehemiah, and that's the end of the Old Testament. This next segment has got to be one of my favorites, because we're going to place all 39 books of the Old Testament somewhere on these 10 periods, which you're starting to memorize by now. The primeval patriarchal, Egypt wilderness, conquest judges, United Kingdom divided kingdom, exile, and return. We're going to do this in three phases. Re remember the first session where the 17 historical books, where do they fit? And the five poetical books, where do they fit? And finally, the 17 prophetical books, where do they fit? Well, I think you're going to be amazed and surprised how this is going to look when all 39 books are arranged where they belong. But first, I want to take a look at the historical books. Where do they fit? And because there's so many, uh, I need somebody to help me out. we got a floor manager here. And... Uh, he is my brother, Gordon. Thank you so much for helping yes, me, brother. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's great. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these books. So if you'll hand me Genesis, Exodus, and Leviticus, the first three, where, 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 where are you going to find the primeval and the patriarchal? Well, believe it or not, Genesis is the first book, and it kind of, it kind of overlaps in that it has both the primeval and patriarchal, but it's mostly in the patriarchs. That's the book of Genesis. Where are you going to find the story of the Egypt period? It's the book of Exodus, the book of Exodus, and it overlaps a little bit into the wilderness period, but we're going to stick it right there. When you think of the wilderness period, it goes the book of Leviticus. Remember, they go down to Mount Sinai, and at Mount Sinai, they get the law, and they get the rules about the tabernacle, and the priesthood, and the sacrifices, and the feast. That's all the book of Leviticus. It's right here. And Numbers takes up the story and all those 40 years in the wandering and what took place as that generation died in the wilderness. And finally they come to the top of uh, the Dead Sea where Moab is and that's where Moses dies. But before he dies, he, um, he kind of reviews this entire history of the Jews including the covenant God made down at Mount Sinai and it's called Deuteronomy. Look at that. This is an important period. Next is the conquest. Well, who, who, who led that? That's Joshua. And so the whole story is here. And it's a fascinating read if you haven't read Joshua in a while. And then the judges will come on. What book of the Bible is about judges? That's right, judges. And what you might not know is in the book of Judges is another little neat story called the book of Ruth. And it fits right here. So now we have the rest of the historical books to fit over here. Well, what takes place in the United Kingdom with Saul, David, and Solomon is kind of split with some books. It's 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, not 2 Kings, and 1 Chronicles. So let's take a look at 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel. It goes on the United Kingdom period. But I want to explain something. And that is how 1 Kings tells this story, but 2 Kings doesn't. And 1 Chronicles tells the story. And the reason is this is that these books were written from a political point of view. And then Chronicles were written by the priests who wanted to tell the same story as these books, but from, uh, from God's point of view. And so that's these books. So when I'm reading these books in my mornings, sometimes I will open Chronicles to see how the priests describe the same events. It's quite a story. When you come to the divided kingdom, you deal with 2 Kings and 2 Chronicles. And they're divided in half. There's the two books, 2 Kings and 2 Chronicles. And there is no historical book over the period of the exile. And when the return takes place, there's three returns and there's three people who have books here. They are Ezra, 
And then the next book actually in time is Esther, and the last book is Nehemiah. Well, there you got it. Take a look down that list. Now, the question I have for you is, where do the five poetical books fit? Where do you think they fit? Well, do they take place in the primeval period? No. Patriarchal? You may have said no, but the answer is one of them does. Somewhere around the time of Abraham is when we have the book of Job. The book of Job is written right around uh, Genesis chapter 11 and 12. But then I want you to be thinking about those poetical books for a moment. Um, the next poetical book after Job is Psalms. Well, who wrote most of Psalms? That's right, David. And you remember where he lived? He was one of those three big kings in the United Kingdom period? That's right. So come all the way back here to the United Kingdom, and the biggest book in the Old Testament we made is the book of Psalms. And that's where it fits so many times. If you have a study Bible, it will say to you, this psalm takes place in this book over here. That's because of how it works. Job, Psalms, who wrote Proverbs? Who wrote Ecclesiastes? Who wrote Song of Solomon? Well, the same person, Song of Solomon. It's... Solomon, he's the last of the United Kingdom kings. So there we have it. Look at all the poetical books that fit under the United Kingdom period. Well, now we move to the prophets, 17 of them. Where on earth do they fit? Well, wait till you see. Are there any prophets in primeval? No. Patriarchal? Uh, no. Egypt? No. No kidding. Wilderness? No. Hmm. Conquest? No. Judges? No. No kidding. How about starting from the other end for a minute? The, this is, last section is about these books right here. Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi all fit at the end. In exile where there are two important people, two important prophets who preached, they are Ezekiel and Daniel. So we have all those other books. Where do they fit? Believe it or not, <laughs> they fit on the divided kingdom. So look at these books. Here is Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Lamentations. They are in the divided kingdom period. And it's hard to imagine, but all of these prophets lived and preached kind of in the same period of time. And you may be asking yourself the question, why? Why are all these prophets here? Well, remember what was taking place. This is where God was trying to get Israel in the north to stop sinning, to stop worshiping the, worshiping the false gods, to stop sacrificing their children, and to obey the covenant that they agreed to obey, and they wouldn't. So God sent many prophets and sent them to preach repentance, and they didn't. And then the Assyrians came and conquered them. And then more prophets came, and they preached to the people of Judah, begged them to repent, and they did a few times. But eventually they fell into great sin and were conquered by the Babylonians. And there, my friend, you have it. The entire story, all 17 of the historical books, the five poetical books, and the 17 prophetical books. To finish up this session, we're going to take those 10 Old Testament people and put them on the 39 books that are sitting on top of the 10 periods. So let's go all the way down. Period number one. Well, I hope by now you know who, who that should be. But we put the book of Job here earlier on as a poetical book. And in a sense, you remember I told you Genesis spanned both of these? And Job, most scholars think, fit right between, right between here, between chapter 11 and 12, which actually means you could almost say it belongs right there. But I want to just leave it where I had it, right here. But this primeval period, at the beginning, well, who, was the first, who were the first primeval people, if you want to say that? Well, that's Adam and Eve, right? They weren't really primeval. They just lived in that period. And you remember the temptation and then the fall. So Adam and Eve, temptation, fall. Well, what's the next one? It's patriarchal. And you remember Abraham and his two famous children, Ishmael, the father of the Arab nation, and Isaac, the father of the Jewish nation. That's where he belongs. Well, who's the key in the next session in Egypt? Well, you remember. It's Joseph, who's the ruler of Egypt. And remember, he was the one who helped with the famine problem, with storing up the grain. Next one in period number four is the wilderness, and that is none other than our famous Moses, 
who led the Exodus out of Egypt and went down to Mount Sinai to get the Ten Commandments. Number five is the conquest. And this was none other than, obviously, Joshua, who was one of the 12 spies. Remember this, who brought back the grapes? And then he was the one who uh, conquered Jericho. Remember Rahab, who put out the red cloth and saved her life. Number six, can you put this together? This is a period of the judges. Well, who, who was the important judge? That's right, Samson. You remember he conquered 1,000 Philistines and he was one of the judges in the book. The next one is the United Kingdom period and that's none other than King David. Can you remember he conquered with the sling Goliath and was the king of the United Kingdom period. We're getting pretty high here, aren't we? Well, number eight, were all those historical books, poetical books were over here and the prophets were here in the divided kingdom. And you remember Rehoboam. He was the one who broke the, the kingdom in half and was the divided kingdom and was the king of Judah. I think I'm going to be lost behind the size of this pile right here. There we go. Well, we come to period number nine is the exile. And you remember there were two key prophets there, Ezekiel and Daniel, and our key person is Daniel. You remember Daniel with the lion's den and the image of the four kingdoms. And finally, number 10, the period called the return. And you remember this is with no other than Nehemiah, the cupbearer that God used to bring around and rebuild the Jerusalem walls in 52 days. If you've enjoyed learning about the Old Testament, you're really going to enjoy the upcoming sessions on the New Testament. But before we leave the Old Testament, let's take a quick look at where we've been together. The books are organized, therefore, by the type of book, not the time, which means the things that are here and here fit back into these stories. And the nation split in half, just like this. Now you're getting, this is really the crisis of the Old Testament. The Bible actually tells you the secret. He who touches you, Jerusalem, touches the apple, the center of his eye. Right here, that's the Holy Land. This goes downhill, it's called the spiral. Oh, there they are, the temptation with the fall of man. The next period called the United Kingdom. Who do you think this is? Moses. Moses. How did you know it was Moses? Primeval period up here. Number five is the conquest. And this was none other than Joshua. You'll never know what's going to happen next when you're in a Teach Every Nation course.